Okay, so uh, today, uh, uh, welcome all. Uh, today we, uh, we have the uh, honor to have uh, uh, an invited speaker from uh, Canada. Uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Rami Mohammed, uh, TA uh, and uh, Research uh, Assistant in the Department of Systems and Computer Engineering uh, in uh, Carleton University. Uh, he is a certified cloud system specialist and currently working in the uh, R&D engineer for the government of Canada. His uh, current research interests include uh, cloud computing, virtualization, 5G networks, and uh, uh, he received his uh, EM, uh, MSc degree in uh, electronics and communications from uh, Aswan University. Uh, and in 2018 and received the uh, Erasmus Plus scholarship to work on his master uh, project at uh, University Central Lancashire uh, in uh, UK. He also received his uh, BSc degree in uh, electronics and communication engineering from the uh, Arab Academy for Science, Technology and Maritime Transport uh, from Aswan. So please uh, join me to welcome uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, uh, Rami, and uh, uh, it seems like uh, it's quite early over there. It's uh, even the date yeah. I see it's uh, 13th of March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was I was so, about to say good morning, but actually, okay. Okay. It is, uh, so I will give the I will give the floor to uh, Rami, and please uh, join me to welcome him. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very pleased and honored to uh, to participate in the seminar. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Zidori, for the invitation. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a 9 a.m. here. I uh, have a big difference in time. Um, okay, thank, th and thank you for, uh, for the introduction. Thank you very much for that. Uh, right. Uh, so uh, in today's talk, um, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the benefits and the challenges of the cloud native 5G networks. Um, so here, all, uh, I'm going to give a, a quick introduction for 5G networks, cloud computing, and how, how both of them uh, can fit together to, uh, to have uh, cloud native services. Um, and then I'll discuss its benefits and, and challenges, and also I will I'll, I'll, I'll represent present uh, one of the re research problems that we're currently working on. Uh, so uh, I was planning to introduce myself, but I think Professor Zidori did that, so uh, need, no need to do that again. Uh, yeah, I, I just you can, yeah. of course you can if you want. Uh, <laughs> maybe I also uh, would like to inform the audience that uh, there is this uh, box for Q and A. If you have any question, yeah, or sure. you can directly write in the chat. Uh, so sure. at uh, about uh, ten minutes or fifteen minutes uh, before uh, uh, five uh, p.m. our time, then uh, we can uh, give the yeah. floor to, uh, yeah. to answer the questions. Okay. Sure, yeah. sure, yeah. sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, just one thing I'd like to add is that uh, um, actually I'm, I'm, I'm currently participating in, in, in a project uh, which is called Anchor 5G. This is a, actually the part of my thesis work. Uh, this is actually a big project, which is a $400 million uh, public-private partnership, uh, which basically here, this is a project, uh, it's a collaboration between the public sector and private sector here in Canada. And uh, I'm, I'm working and collaborating with the uh, uh, CNN Ericsson uh, in Canada, and, and basically working in, 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 in problems related to the uh, basically cloud native 5G uh, services. So um, having said that, uh, let's get started. Um, so the agenda again for today that we are, I'm going to go, to go through the 5G networks, then cloud computing, cloud native 5G services, and then I'm going to give an example problem, which is basically this is one of the problems that we're tackling uh, as a part of this uh, big project, which is uh, Anchor 5G. Uh, basically, Anchor 5G, this is, a, I would say, that's this bit for uh, companies here in Canada, uh, spe specifically in the province of Ontario and Quebec, so that they can uh, innovate in, 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 in 5G. So, yeah, we think of it as a, as a test bed so that uh, uh, small to medium businesses can uh, uh, can exp like can 
can start scaling their their uh, their application services through 5G. <laughs> well, and one of the problems that we are tackling is DNF placement. So what I'm going to do is that I will start by introducing the 5G networks and the cloud computing, and then how Pulse fit together uh, to provide what's called cloud native 5G services. And then uh, I'm going to give an example of this, I'd say, research problem that we are actively working on. All right. Uh, so. Um, talking about the 5G networks, if we compare it to its previous uh, generations, uh, 1G, 2G, uh, 3, 3G, uh, if you look, for example, we have in 80s, we had this 1G where we had this analog, uh, analog modulation and analog communications, uh, the quality of service was not that good. I'd say it was not the best. Also, the, the mobile battery, we had a poor battery life for our mobile phones. Voice quality was bad. And then we had this jump to uh, to use a new technology, which is uh, the using digital modulation and 2G. And we had an improved in, in, in performance and the quality of service. Same happens in early two, uh, 2000s uh, with the introduction of the 3G. But then we started to have this uh, uh, mobile data not only voice services um, and from the then 3g we in, in 2010 we we, we we started to have the 4g lte that's what we are enjoying right now and having high speed uh, uh, mobile data through our phone um, so if you look at each generation here we, what, what, what's what makes a big difference is that for each generation we have an improvement in the quality of service because we, there is an improvement in, in the modulation techniques. Uh, and the question here, is it the same with 5G? So is a 5G that's going to have, let's say we will going to use a new technology or a new modulation scheme, for example, that's going to improve the services? Yes, that's, that, that's, that's happened, but uh, 5G is really more than that. Uh, and we can uh, here have a comparison between what we have today and what we expect to have in the 5G, right? So this is a comparison, the data is from uh, Nokia Labs white paper. Um, and today we have this, the network supports to about 200 million people, talking about 4G network, uh, from 2020 to 25. Now we need the network support for about 1.02 billion things. And that's actually a big difference now. We, we, we use in the previous generation to have the networks that designed for people, for basically for us human, uh, voice service, mobile data, uh, 5G is designed for things, meaning that not only people connected to this network, but also we have things. We have the, uh, 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 the IoT devices, cars, um, like everything, drones. Uh, now the thing's going to be connected to this network. That's why we have this big number, big jump in the number of things to be connected to the network. Speed, uh, today we have, I would say, decent speed. Uh, speaking about myself, uh, I would say having 100 megabit per second is more than enough. However, we require it in, 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 uh, for 5G, now we require it to, have to be 100 times faster. Why is that? Because we actually going to have a new services. Uh, latency, now we have the latency in range of 10 minutes milliseconds, we want it to be 10 times less than that. Uh, also, if you talk about the network service level, uh, currently we have a, what, what it's called best effort for all, meaning that if, if, if the network promises you that you're going to experience this speed of 100 megabit per second, uh, it's just a promise, but it's, uh, there is no guarantee that you can actually get the 100 megabit per second. Uh, this is what's called best effort for all. This is basically how the IP networks work. Um, in the 5G networks, uh, there is no it's no longer the case. We need a committed service level agreement, meaning that uh, if if you tell me that you, uh, you're giving me 100 megabit per second, it has to be 100 megabit per second. This is a committed quality of service and service level agreement. And talking about the logical network, um, and this is very interesting because now that's one of the things that's going to revolutionize this uh, uh, mobile network is that now we have one network that everything is connected to. We, uh, let's say if you have your uh, car, your uh, say watch, everything can be connected to the same network as your mobile phone. However, uh, this is a case of one size fits all, which is doesn't work in 5G. We need to have 
what it's what we call network slices we have virtual networks on top of, of our networks and each network will be designed for specific application so for example uh, having the autonomous vehicles or cars connected to a different network than the networks that we use for ourselves to connect our phone because we we have different quality of service and and, and requirement for each service so in other words here and our network is going to be sliced and uh, uh, meaning we have many network slices so we can think of of the 5g really as a big jump and if we look at this requirement we can understand that uh, having this requirement is because of the use cases that we're going to uh, witness in the 5g era so uh, this is a, a figure that shows the, the 5G use cases. Uh, and it's basically, we have three main types of, of, of uh, say, services. Uh, if you look here, we have the enhanced mobile broadband, and then the massive machine type communication and the ultra reliable and low latency uh, communications. And if you look here, it's now it's no longer we 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 have this uh, 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 improvement from 4G. It's, it's not just an improvement in, in in the quality of service or data rate or the quality of uh, voice uh, service. Now we have a new services. Uh, we have uh, enhanced mobile broadband. So, for example, for the 3D video, yeah, 100 megabit per second is uh, more than enough for us now. But what if you now we have the 3D video? Now we need more speed uh, for massive machine type communication. Think about smart cities where everything is connected to that to that uh, 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 to that network. Uh, in this case, we have a massive machine type communication. Like we have too many. Uh, uh, things connected to the network and the ultra reliable and low latency communications. Uh, you can think of it. One of the applications is the self-driving car, which is a, it's 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 basically heavily depend on the communications uh, and and it takes a decision based on uh, that communication. So it's, this has to be very quickly. That's why we one of the requirements to have it one less than one millisecond. I mean the latency. <laughs> so looking at this, uh, this is. The, I would say the, the 5G use cases, now we have new services and that's why we have this strict uh, new requirements. <laughs> so now having said that, now 5G is not just an improvement to the previous network, it's a, actually a breakthrough technology. Uh, and uh, since now we have a different services, we have, uh, we have a different services running on the same infrastructure. Uh, and that's challenging because for 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 the previous network we had once one, only one I would say use case we only uh, the network is used to for broadband uh, for for data uh, and and for voice and for us for human but now we need the different uh, different services running on the same infrastructure so that's a challenge that we want to uh, that we're going to face in the five G. Thanks to uh, the advancement in, 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 the, in the cloud and the software defined networking, and also what we call network function virtualization, now this is possible, meaning that we, what, what we do is actually we virtualize the network. Uh, and we have a logical networks on top of our physical network. I will go through this uh, in a bit. Uh, but the main thing here is that this, this cloud-based architecture not only brings new possibilities, so that's now we will have a new services, uh, but also it has new challenges. As I will, will show one of the, of the research problems that we are working on right now is that like virtualizing the network uh, uh, actually pre presents a new challenges that is hard to solve. Uh, and, um, uh, um, and, and, and now we need a solution for, for these problems. So um, now, for the 5G, we, so we understand that we need the different services running on the same physical infrastructure, and this can be achieved by adopting uh, technologies from the cloud and software defined networking, which is the network function virtualization. So now we understand this. This is, I would say, the main thing that we can keep in mind for now that we need a network that works for different services. So having said that, now we need to know what is a cloud computing, what is this NFV network function virtualization and how it's actually uh, uh, can allow us to have that to to have this virtual uh, or, or let's say logical network on top of a physical or physical network. So to start with, uh, here this is a quick introduction to the cloud computing. So the cloud computing you, you can find many 
actually many uh, um, uh, many definitions to the cloud computing. However, one of its uh, definitions is that it is a, just a model for for enabling uh, on-demand network access to a shared pool of resources. These resources can be network, service, storage. Uh, application and, and services. And usually this is the resources that you don't have, like you use these resources, but you don't own these resources and you use it uh, on a pay as you go uh, uh, model. And it's a, uh, here it uh, can be rapidly provisioned. You can, uh, if you have these resources, you can get them very quickly and it uh, provides like high level abstraction of the resources and, uh, and, and basically the underlying infrastructure uh, in which these resources reside. Out of, but it has some essential characteristics, service model and deployment model. And, and now um, how cloud computing achieves that, like how, how can convert this infrastructure into a pool of resources by means of a, what, what's called a re virtualization, which is a, a fundamental technology that powers the cloud. Uh, and, and now we are moving that, uh, I mean, introducing the cloud computing virtualization and then how this can be used in the 5G. So virtualization, if we can define the virtualization as it's simply creating uh, a software device or, or say a virtualized version of something. Uh, this thing here it can be uh, say, um, it can be network function, it can be uh, a computer network resources, operating system. Uh, so we create a, vir a virtual version or a software version uh, of, of our resources. And then we have them. We look at them after that, uh, as we have a pool of, of of resources. So this virtualization is a fundamental part of the cloud computing. And usually, when we deal with the virtualization, we have the choice. We have to choose between two virtualization technology, which is very common today: uh, virtual machine and container. Uh, so the virtual machine uh, and and containers here is simply that. If you have, let's say, the infrastructure, the infra you can think of it as a server, physical server, or a, you have a physical computer, and then what you do is that you virtualize this, this, this resources in this computer so that you can have a multiple virtual computers running on top of that uh, computer or server. This is achieved by means of, uh, of if for the case of virtual machine on the left, we have this infrastructure, and then we have the hypervisor. The hypervisor, this is the responsible for, for basically managing this virtual computer that's run on top of the computer. And as you can see here, when in the same computer, we have a multiple operating system running a different application. And then we have the container, which another uh, uh, virtualization technology. But the difference here that uh, instead of virtualizing uh, uh, up to, uh, let's say, the level of virtualization, instead of virtualizing the hardware, now we're virtualizing at the level of the operating system. Uh, so the container here, just, just we will have one operating system running what is called container engine. And then we will have different application or different services running uh, as a container uh, uh, in, inside this this uh, operating system. So uh, the take here is that for virtualization, we have the two, two choice, two, two virtualization techniques, uh, virtual machine and container. And um, up, like, based on the use case, uh, which one to use, uh, it depends on, 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 depend on the application really. <clears throat> so, and, and now, so we talked about cloud computing and virtualization, so now, what about this uh, NFV? Because this is, um, we mentioned that cloud computing uh, would achieve this uh, having a, a, a support several services or uh, using the same physical infrastructure using the network function virtualization. So now what is network function virtualization? It is, I'd say simply virtualized network service or, uh, or I would say that it, we have a traditional services or network services such as router or firewall. And uh, virtualization or network function virtualization is creating a software version of that network function. So if you have a router, uh, which can be a physical device, and, and this is a router, uh, uh, for net, in network function virtualization, you create a software uh, version of, of that router and it becomes a software. Uh, and then this software, uh, which is the, we call them uh, virtual network functions, are packaged. It can be packaged as a virtual machine or containers and can run actually on in, in, in network function virtualization infrastructure. And, and, and now 
we, we can see that, all right, so now we have this virtual network function, which is a software version of our net, traditional network functions, and we can run them as a virtual machine or container anywhere uh, uh, where uh, on our uh, infrastructure. Uh, so the infrastructure that's used to run this uh, containers over a virtual machine is called NFVI. So I'd say that uh, it, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm, the acronym here, it can be confusing. So I'm, 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 I'm summarizing them in the next slide. Uh, but what I want to say here is that this, this concept here is actually reshaping the telecommunication industry. Uh, uh, because now, as you can see that now we can have this network function uh, uh, as a software and um, we can use the technologies from the cloud computing, uh, which is uh, used for deploy deploying software with this function for 5G. So uh, here, this is a summary of this uh, acronym uh, because it can, can get confusing. Uh, so the network functions, this is traditional network functions, uh, which is, uh, can be routing, load balancing. Uh, and then we have network function virtualization. This is a the concept of running a software defined version of this traditional network function. And then we have the network function virtualization infrastructure. And this is the infrastructure which is uh, used to, to, to run this, uh, uh, um, I would say, this software defined uh, network functions. Now, this software uh, defined uh, uh, networks is called VNF. So VNF is the software implementation of the network function. And then we have the scheme which is called manual management and orchestration, which is, which is for managing an FVI and, and virtual network functions. So next set of the, that's a, I would say a high level uh, uh, framework for how this, uh, how this work, which is the network function virtualization infrastructure. Uh, this is the framework from ETSI, European Telecommunication Standards Institute. Uh, where what we have here that if you look here we have this NFVI, which is simply we have this our resources which can be compute storage network, uh, and then we have a virtualization layer, and then on top of this virtualization layer now we have a pool of resources, and now um, on top this pool of resources pool of virtual resources can be used to run virtual network functions. The, the the layer that manages the, this, uh, I would say, the VNF and NFVI is called NF, the management and orchestration. So why we say that? Because now, if we look at the services, so uh, the cloud native 5G services, uh, it is simply a group of virtual network functions. So in order to, to, to have uh, a cloud native 5G services, it's it just... It, building uh, the traditional network services, but now using these, te these techniques of virtualization uh, and running them as a virtual network functions. And for communication service provider, these, these applications are basically our network functions. These VNF are just uh, network functions. Um, and, and now what, what, what's really happening is that we take this network function and we de decompose this function into very small uh, uh, manageable pieces, which called microservices. You can, like, if you if read about the cloud, you'll hear about, a lot about the microservice, which is nothing but just uh, dividing the function into manageable small pieces. And now deploying this uh, uh, microservice on uh, an FVI infrastructure. So if you look at the cloud native 5G service, we can think of it as right now we have our infrastructure, which is now virtualized. So that the, the, our network itself, the resources available is virtualized. And then we run our function at the VNF, virtual network functions. And the service itself is a group of virtual network function. And in order to achieve this service, in order to, to, do, to uh, I mean, to have the service really for end user, we need to, place these uh, virtual network function in the network uh, and connect the end user to the endpoint. Uh, this is what's called end-to-end -end network service reside in an end-to-end -end network slice. So what, what can happen here is that we can have a different network slices and each slice will have a different, um, can have different topology, different requirement, different resources, and each network slice, it can serve different uh, vertical different uh, service and that's 
basically that is the idea of how we can virtualize uh, our infrastructure so that it can support multiple services. So for example, in, in the case of cloud native uh, 5G services, again, this is a uh, this is a what is what's called container deployment. So that just a quick reminder: we have two technologies for virtualization, virtual machine, and container. For cloud native five G services, usually we have this: we we decompose our network function, where uh, which uh, which a group of network functions make uh, make a service, and then this service, I would say it. In this case, it's a group of microservices which uh, is deployed as a containers. Uh, so at as you can see here, what, what we will have is a network function virtualization infrastructure. And on top of that, we, we will have the container runtime for just running the, the, this is used to run the containers. And on top of that, we will have uh, microservices for different use cases. So for example, here, uh, this is microservice for the radio access network, telco microservice, enterprise microservice, different, you see here, different services running on the same infrastructure. So why is that? Why why we do that? Like, what is the benefit of of having this uh, cloud native architecture? What is the benefit? The benefit is now that we reduce the capital and operational expenditure, so it's better cost efficiency. Uh, and now it's a, since now we're dealing with the software. Think of it: if you have the, if you want to deploy a network function, let's say at at at, at location X, uh, traditionally, let's say if you want to add a router here or the load balancing, you go there and then install the load balancing. Uh, now, it just it's just a matter. It's just a software. You can you can upload the software uh, and run it on the uh, on the infrastructure available at this location without worrying about the underlying hard hardware. So meaning that you can deploy new services very quickly. Uh, scalability can scale uh, and grow service uh, and also flexibility to update. Once you have an update and you want to, let's say to, um, to, to, to update the standard or, or, or update your functions, uh, all what you have to do, it, it's simply a software update, not a hardware update. You don't need to have someone go to the actual location and change uh, the device. Uh, and also, and, and that's a concept with a, with a container or I would say microservices, is that it's very resilient. So what, it, it, let's say if, if you have one of your functions or one of the part of the service, which is a virtual network function, fails, you can just simply create a new one and deploy it, uh, which makes it very resilient. Uh, think about it for the traditional uh, case where you have, let's say, a physical device and it fails, you need to, so, to, to, to have someone go there and, and fix it. <laughs> uh, so basically, that's uh, the, 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 the cloud native uh, 5G networks, I would say, services. So next, um, I'm like having said that, I would um, um, uh, I would present a research problem that actually we are actively working on right now, which is based on this topic. Uh, this this problem in the literature it's it, it's known as the VNF placement. So now we understand that VNF uh, is a virtual network function. It's a software version of the traditional network function, and in order to have a, a service, we it the service is it can be represented as a group or a, a, a group of virtual network functions that are interconnected together. And in order to, uh, to have the service, we need to deploy this uh, service uh, chain or, or a chain of virtual network function on the network. So here I'm showing a simple example, which is the, uh, I'd say this trivial example to explain the problem where we have, uh, we have an infrastructure or we have an, which is a network. And the network is divided into three parts, which is a core, transport, and each. And now we uh, we have the, we have the resources, uh, computer res comp computational resources, and the communication resources in this network, which is uh, we have servers, and uh, interconnected by routers, and also we have an, a gateway routers. So this is a router from which I would say, uh, or the, from which the end user can access the network. And uh, so we have this infrastructure and this infrastructure is virtualized. So now we're talking about network function virtualization infrastructure. And then we have uh, our service. So the service can be represented as a group, uh, I would say interconnected VNF uh, virtual network functions. 
And uh, what is shown here is that's simply the three simple types of, of, of services, which is uh, simply a, a, a chain of interconnected virtual network functions uh, showing the red, blue, and green type. And the problem is as following. Given that infrastructure, and uh, which is uh, also you have a resources, uh, the network state, uh, and also given this network services, which is a chain of virtual network function, uh, find, find the optimal placement of this virtual network functions that correspond to different services into this uh, 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 network. So what we are doing is that's mapping. So to res also resource allocation problem. So we want to map this VNF into this network. So for example, if you look at this uh, service here, which is uh, shown in red, um, where to place these VNFs? Because now, we, is it better to place this all the VNF at the nearest server, or is it better to place to chain it to have some of them near the edge and some of them at the core of the network? Uh, what is the optimal placement of this chain of virtual network functions that can, um, I would say, uh, improve the cost? And the cost here is really can be can represent different things. You can have the cost as this is uh, again energy, so you want to save the energy, or actually the cost of of, of having uh, of having this uh, resources. So this resources in the network has a cost, and you want to find the optimal placement of these services or chain of virtual network functions. And this problem, unfortunately, this is MP hard problem. Meaning that if you have for, all right, for simple instance, for example, for this problem shown here, you can find the optimal placement. Just give me the cost of, of the of the uh, associated with the resources, and I will formulate this problem. Say as an, an, an interlinear program or, or uh, uh, formulate an optimization problem for this, and I will find the optimal solution in a reasonable time. Because this is a small problem, but what about um, its scalability? If you uh, uh, scale this problem, talking about a uh, very I'll say a metropolitan network with a um, with a hundreds of nodes or even thousands, and, and and the services you have a hundreds of services running, hundreds of service chain, and you when you formulate this problem for this uh, for this use case, you will end up having an NPR problem which is very hard to solve. So this is a problem which is uh, actually we are actively working on this uh, at one of our problems, which is called V and F placement. So the challenge is that now for the, for this cloud-based architecture, um, basically this is a promise that we have that said now it's, this is how the 5G is going to support different services using the same physical infrastructure. Uh, but now we are having this problem that's, that's up here, which is uh, now this, uh, uh, this operation, I would say, uh, optimizing the, 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 the network operation for, so for example, service optimization as in DNF placement, uh, it, has to be, it has to be done in the real time, meaning that it's an NP-hard problem and we need the answer very quickly. Uh, so this is the, this problem, this combinatorial optimization problem that usually it has an NP-hard nature and it's hard to solve. So therefore, uh, and this actually one of the, uh, I mean, uh, a research direction is that to develop um, a heuristic, develop algorithm and heuristic for uh, uh, for this problem, resource allocation, VNF placement. VNF placement is one of the problems, but there are uh, uh, also other problems that appear here, uh, which now we need to, to, to like to develop a heuristic and algorithms for, for this use case. Also one direction here, but it's not mentioned uh, in text, is that using of machine learning, reinforcement learning to solve such problems uh, uh, and, and solve this combinatorial, uh, NP-hard combinatorial optimization problems. So this is the challenges. So we, now this is, I'd say the cloud native, uh, it's really, uh, it, it, it's very promising and this is a, uh, it's going to improve and provide new services. Uh, but also we have the challenges that, that we face. Um, that's, uh, I'd say that's all what I have to say. Uh, and now, um, like, thank you very much for listening. Um, and now, um, um, if you have any question, you can type it in the Q&A section. Thank you very much, uh, Rami. And uh, 
the floor is uh, open. You can either uh, raise your hand if you want uh, to, to talk or you can write in the Q&A or uh, in the chat. Uh, so uh, uh, I was uh, uh, expecting uh, the, the presentation to be a little bit, uh, I mean, maybe longer, but uh, we, so this is in your benefit. So you have enough time to ask uh, any question. Uh, okay, so I don't see anything in the chat until now or the uh, Q and A. So, is there any uh, question? That means uh, everything was clear. All these challenges, no question about these challenges. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know because this is a webinar, so the, usually they cannot talk, but. Uh, I allow, I allow anyone who raises his hand to, to just unmute his, uh, himself and uh, can talk. Mahmoud, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, uh, regarding the NB hard problem, uh, what is uh, uh, how we can tackle these uh, challenges? How we can tackle these problems? Uh, is there any specific hot topics uh, regarding solving this problem? Yeah, for. Uh, usually when you have an NPR problem, generally, um, like you have a problem that you can't, you, you can't find the optimum uh, solution. So what, what you're trying to do is to find a heuristic or another method that finds your suboptimal solution. Uh, meaning that uh, you sacrifice uh, the, the having the best, the best solution, or I would say the best answer. Um, but uh, you have, you have, let's say less, quality solutions but in in a reasonable time uh is there a hot topic definitely yeah so for the combinatorial optimization there is the uh like the use of uh, neural uh, actually it's called neural comp uh, combinatorial optimization so using neural networks and reinforcement reinforcement learning uh for solving combinatorial optimization actually that's not only for for cloud but but generally this is a very hot topic um because this is now we want to like now there is this uh, we had many benefits uh, uh, recently from using or adopting machine learning and reinforcement learning uh, and we and now we want to to see if we can actually get get a benefit from this uh, techniques uh, solving combinatorial optimization so uh, other techniques is that now we, we started to have a I would say very uh, uh, I'd say high performance computing. So we can, uh, if you have a, let's say a problem that takes long time to run, uh, try to, to use, um, I would say very powerful computer and also distributed computing. So using parallel processing, distributed uh, computing so that you can run this problem. Still, uh, it's, it's a hard problem, meaning that at, at some point you, you, there is no way that you can find the best solution. So. The hot topic for that is definitely the machine learning, reinforcement learning. Uh, this this uh, learning techniques uh, um, can be very, uh, I would say, very advantageous for the combinatorial optimization in general, and for our case, uh, uh, resource uh, uh, allocation problems in specific. Thank you, Mahmoud. Thank you very much. Uh, any any other question, please? If uh, no questions, uh, then uh, uh, we can uh, maybe you have the uh, email uh, of uh, yeah. Mr. Um, um, Rami and you can contact him maybe later on if you need uh, uh, some more detail or any uh, further discussion. Sure. Uh, with that, uh, I will uh, thank uh, uh, Rami Mohammed for very much for this uh, nice you. talk and uh, uh, in, into the uh, future uh, technology and uh, uh, I hope uh, all the best for his research also and uh, uh, with that I will uh, uh, close this uh, session and uh, thank you very much for all the audience and for uh, uh, our speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you Professor Zidori for the invitation. I uh, was very pleased to uh, participate in the seminar. Thank you. Thank you.